Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Pennsylvania Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. We are really excited you are here. Before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items to note. First, if you have any questions at all, to feel free to use the Q&A button to type in your questions to the presenters at any time. They are here, ready and available to answer your questions. Your camera and microphone are off. You are muted and your video is off. The panelists can't see or hear you. This is one of many college presentations happening tonight, so feel free to sign up for more at the same place that you registered for this one. And lastly, all sessions are being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash Pennsylvania. We are currently in session E3, where my mouse is circling at the moment. And this is also the same order of presentations. So without further ado, I'll get out of the way and introduce our first representative from Lock Haven University. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Lindsay Mace. I'm representing uh, Lock Haven University tonight. So I will um, pull up my screen and share some information with you. So OK, so Lock Haven University, um, we have about 3,400 students on our campus. So this includes um, our undergraduate as well as our graduate students on our campus. So we are considered a small to medium sized university. Um, we have a student to faculty ratio of 13 to one with an average class size of 22 students in the classroom. Um, so students really do get an individualized um, approach to their education. You'll have a lot of access to our faculty um, and you'll get a faculty member assigned to you within your program of study. Um, so they're going to help you with scheduling classes, um, talking with you about any research opportunities, job internships, you know, whatever pertains to your program of study. Um, and then looking at some of our most popular uh, majors on campus, you'll be looking at our health sciences. So um, there are a lot of tracks in our health science. So whether you're thinking um, exercise science, um, pre-physician's assistant, um, pre-physical therapy. Um, we also have applied health studies as well as community and public health education. Um, we do have um, accelerated programs for um, with ex exercise science into athletic training at three plus two. Um, Pre-PA is really popular um, with our accelerated three plus two program um, in the graduate program actually on our campus, as well as a partnership with Widener University in Chester, Pennsylvania for our three plus three in pre-physical therapy. Um, obviously some other popular programs would be our criminal justice, um, our business programs as well, um, sport administration, um, which also has an accelerated uh, master's program. Education programs, Lock Haven was founded as a teacher's college um, in 1870. So we're really um, excited and proud of our education programs. Um, students can study pre-K through 12 as well as um, another opportunity with um, health and physical education um, and some routes there with um, psychology, whether you want to take a Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science. Um, and we do offer the Master's in Clinical Mental Health Counseling. Um, and lastly, one of the other popular ones would be our biology program, um, because we do have a lot of tracks um, going into that program as well whether you're looking to study marine biology, um, cellular and organismal, um, biomedical sciences, if you wanna go on into more graduate studies, um, as well as ecology and environmental studies in there. Um, we have 16 NCAA division one and two sports. So we are division one in men's wrestling and women's field hockey. Um, I will say when students come to visit campus, we are very helpful in getting um, meetings set up with coaches. So if you are looking to um, take your athletic career to the next level, um, we'll definitely help you in that conversation. Um, as far as visiting our campus, we are open Monday through Friday. So we have in-person um, sessions and tours. So you can come in the morning or afternoon. We are offering weekly um, virtual visits as well. Um, those are typically held on Monday afternoons. So 
Uh, we are pretty flexible that way, and we will have um, more academic showcases uh, either later on in the summer or in this fall. We'll have those um, up and running as well as open houses in the fall. Um, scholarship opportunities for students. So we're really excited about our scholarships. Um, for incoming freshmen, if you are in state, um, we're looking at GPA because we are test optional again for fall 2022. So minimum GPA 2.5 gets you $1,000 per year up to $2,500 per year. Um, if you're looking to be um, an out of state student, this has some different numbers, but you're looking at anywhere from $4,500 per year to um, over $8,000 in scholarships for out of state uh, freshmen. Um, and so lastly, going off of that, um, being able to apply. So if you're a junior going into your senior year, um, our application will open up starting in July. So you can reach out to your high school guidance counselor, um, ask them to send us your transcripts so we can have that to go along with your application. Um, you can send us letters of recommendation, um, personal essays. Um, if you have had a chance to take SAT or ACT, you can submit those scores as well. Um, like I said before, we are not requiring it, um, but it's not going to hurt you if you have that and want to, you know, attach it to your application. Um, it is on a rolling basis, um, and we do look at each student individually. So uh, that's all I have about Lock Haven. So I will open it for questions. Great, thank you. We'll jump over to our next representative from the University Yes, from the University of Pittsburgh at Bradford. Thank you. Uh, again, just want to reintroduce myself. I'm Jay Klinger from uh, the University of Pittsburgh at Bradford. I'm uh, just going to provide you guys with some you know, quick information um, about uh, where we, who we are and where we're at. if my slide my slideshow cooperates Let's see what we got here there we go all right so just some quick facts about uh pitt bradford we're located in bradford pennsylvania a very rural town located in the allegheny national forest um in regards to the size of our campus we have roughly 1300 undergraduate students so when you kind of boil that down to your student to faculty ratio it's right around 15 to 1. your average class size is anywhere from 20 to 25 students for your general education courses and then for your upper level courses, uh, they dwindle down to about eight to 12 students, depending on the major. Um, we offer over 40 different majors, along with 50 different minors, as well as 15 different pre-professional programs. In regards to um, our more popular majors, uh, nursing is definitely one of our top ones. Um, criminal justice, uh, business management, exercise science, as well as biology are probably our top five programs, just in terms of the numbers. Um, and our students also graduate with a world recognized University of Pittsburgh degree. Uh, so just because you come to the Bradford campus does not mean uh, that your, your degree will say Bradford, you get the same exact degree that the students receive down at the main campus. Uh, so obviously a big difference between um, ourselves uh, and the main campus, uh, one being the campus size, uh, one being location, and the third being price. Uh, we are significantly cheaper than, than the main campus. So that's always something to, to consider when you're looking uh, at Pitt Bradford. Um, next, going to kind of dive into more of the scholarship opportunities um, and kind of more on the application basis. So we'll start from the bottom. Uh, we are test optional at Pitt Bradford. Uh, we, our application is free. So when you go to our website at upb.pitt.edu, uh, you just click on the apply, apply now tab uh, and it's a free application. Um, all we need is just a copy of your high school transcripts uh, to complete that application. Um, again, test optional. So if you did take the SAT or ACT, um, we still accept those. Uh, to acquire one of our scholarships, uh, you must have at least a 2.75 along with either a 1030 on the SAT or a 20 ACT um, or a 3.6 high school GPA to obtain um, our base uh, merit scholarship. And that's a $5,000 scholarship for our in-state students and then $10,500 for our out-of-state. Um, again, we also have a unique opportunity for our uh, New York State students in the bordering 24 counties to obtain in-state tuition. So that's always something to, to kind of think about. Uh, next, we'll kind of go more into the on-campus uh, housing and dining. All of our freshmen are placed in uh, suite-style apartments. Uh, they're, they come fully furnished with adjustable meal plans. Uh, we're very fortunate. We just added um, a Qdoba and Starbucks on campus, so we have a couple more different you know, options aside from the traditional meal plan um, for our students. Uh, so right off the bat, our students get to live in the cream of the crop in terms of our housing. Uh, this 
photo in the top left is Livingston Alexander House. This is kind of a modern take on our uh, traditional kind of style of housing. And then a remainder of students live in our resident style suites, uh, which is Rice House or a Recoit House. Um, so like I said, right off the bat, our freshmen live in uh, the top tiers of our housing. Uh, next, kind of going more into uh, the campus involvement. Uh, we offer uh, 14 different NCAA Division III uh, sports, uh, so there definitely is an opportunity for students who are inter interested in athletics uh, to kind of make that jump from the high school level to the collegiate level. Um, uh, we are able to, to set up, you know, meeting times with those coaches if you're interested in, you know, talking with them on a campus visit. Um, we also have over 60 plus different organizations and clubs on campus, uh, ranging from, you know, special interest clubs to academic based clubs. Uh, so there's a, a huge way to get you know involved in the campus community, um, as well as a lot of different uh, community service opportunities as well. Um, and to kind of wrap it up, if you have any questions, uh, this is our contact info. Feel free to call uh, our campus or email our uh, admissions uh, email accounts at the uh, following links. Um, also, you know, be sure to visit uh, our website at upb.pit.edu. Uh, and just a quick note as well, we just recently uh, were approved for in-person visits on campus. Um, we do have, you know, various time slots in the morning and, and afternoon for students to come and visit campus in person. Uh, you can check that out directly on uh, the UPB website um, and schedule yourself for one of those visits. Um, after that, that's, you know, that's about all I got. So if there are any questions, um, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Very helpful. We really appreciate it. Just a friendly reminder that if you have any questions, to feel free to submit those using the Q&A function. Any questions at all to our representatives, they are here, ready and available to answer them. We have a specific question to also note the school name um, as well. Our next representative is from Keystone College. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Haley. I am an admissions counselor at Keystone, and I just want to take a couple minutes to talk about what we're all about. So let me go ahead and get this up here. So we're a smaller school. We have about 1,300 students on our campus. Um, you'll see our average class size is about 13 students. So the faculty to student ratio is about 11 to 1. We, uh, our students do receive financial aid, about 96% of our students do receive it. And just a note here, we are the lowest tuition of all private schools in our region. Um, our campus has 276 acres of woodland areas behind our campus. And it's just a lot of nature preserves. It's really pretty back there with hi hiking trails and a stream and ponds. And it's just a really great thing for um, our wildlife biology students to use. Um, Stone. So if you weren't sure you wanted to study, you could come in as an undeclared major, you get your own advisor that helps you work through um, what you want to be studying and then we'll help you find a major to what you would be graduating with um, when you finish your time here at Keystone. So academics, again, that small class size, being in a smaller school, you're able to get that personalized attention from your professors and it's a really great thing because you're learning from experienced professors that have personal experience in their field. So putting their experiences side by side with what you're going to be learning in the classroom, it's a really great thing to put the two together so you can have an idea of what your field is going to look like when you start looking for jobs after graduation. We do also have personalized advising and career center on, career center on campus. So uh, you have an advisor that works with you while you're a student here to make sure you get all your classes in. And then our career center works with you to prepare you for after graduation. So that's um, finding a career after graduation, or even if you wanted to go on to a graduate program where we work with you to make sure that your application and your resume is good to go and you're able to succeed after graduation. Um, you also do get real world experience here at Keystone through internships and research opportunities. You're able to kind of do whatever you want through an internship or research, kind of gear your education to how you want it to be and able to get the experiences that you want to have, again, just to help you when you're going to be looking for jobs and for graduate programs after um, graduating. So Keystone has a lot of support for our students. Um, I talked about our career center, but we also do have disability services. We have a counseling and well-being center on campus, and we do have a lot of support for first-generation students. We work with you, and we do have a lot of faculty on campus that will work with you 
throughout the entire college process. It's not just you're admitted and that's it. It's the entire time you're, you're here at Keystone. People get to know you and they're invested in your success. And throughout all this support, you really will strive here at Keystone. Um, just a little bit about our student life. We do have 30 plus clubs and organizations on campus. Uh, we have 18 varsity sports and we do have instrument and vocal ensembles, which is free for our students to be a part of. Um, through these, you're able to get more experience. Um, and right here, you can see that there is leadership opportunities that you can get through these clubs and organizations um, to kind of get you just an another perspective of the college life outside of just academics. So I'll talk a little bit about our application process. So our application is free. We have a free application on our website and we do accept the Common App. Um, we, after your application to complete it, you just have to send in your transcripts. That's all that we require for admissions. Um, you're able to send in SAT scores and you're able to send in letters of recommendation, but they are not required. Um, so after we receive your completed application, you'll get an admissions decision. And with that, you get your potential merit scholarship award. So it's not a separate application you have to go through, it's all in one. After you receive your decision, you file your FAFSA and our FAFSA code is listed there, but you could also search for us by school on your FAFSA application. And then after you've been accepted, I do recommend that you do come for an accepted student event. We do those in the spring, um, later spring, so that students can come back on campus or even just come for a personal campus visit. We have a wide variety of visits. We have in-person, we have virtual, anything to gear your visit to be what you want it to be. And that is really a great way to get to see the college and be able to make your college decision is be able to like, you know, see the campus to see if you can see yourself fitting in at that school. And then after that, um, there is a deposit that you pay and that uh, secures your place in our housing and um, gets you a class schedule put together. So this is just the contact information for us at the admissions office. Um, we're split up kind of by territory, but you could reach out to us anytime. Our email is there, it's admissions at keystone.edu. Um, and our website is just keystone.edu. So if you have any questions or you wanna look more into us, um, our contact information is here and we are happy to help. Thank you, we really appreciate it. The next representative is from Verto Education, College Semesters Abroad. Awesome, thank you. Hi everybody. Um, so my name is Lainey, I am with Verto Education. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my presentation. All right, so um, apologies, my computer is being extremely slow today. So if it freezes, I'm blaming my computer. Uh, so Virtual Education is a little bit different than the other colleges that are here today. Um, so what we do is we are actually sort of this awesome mix of study abroad um, and gap year. Um, so we are fully accredited college semesters but you are traveling around the world and getting that sort of gap year experience. So it's not just studying abroad, it's a very culturally immersive um, program. So students are getting to become these incredible global citizens um, traveling to different countries while they're earning those freshman general education college credits. Um, so we offer that first semester of college for students and then you're able to transfer those credits to your college of choice. You could um, continue on and matriculate to any one of these universities that are here today um, or any other college. So there are a few big parts to Verto. Um, oh, before that, I do have a quick video, which if my computer works, it'll let me play. Let's see. This is essentially Verto in a nutshell. So that's Berto. Um, you're traveling around to incredible countries, you're taking college courses, um, and you're exploring the world. So the three main pillars of Verto um, are listed here. So the first is the best first year of college. And the second one is admissions to a great fit school. So we're actually a consortium of over 60 colleges right now. Um, I'll go into that in just a second, but it's very exciting. The third pillar is affordability. Obviously, college tuition is a pretty important aspect when you're looking at colleges. 
So the best first year of college can mean something different for every student. Um, essentially, what we mean by this is being a very supportive, a very exciting, a very well-rounded um, college semester in terms of academic, um, professional, and personal growth. Um, so we have six different locations in total. Um, three of those are in Europe. We have one in England, one in Italy, and one in Spain. The other three are um, what we called field semesters. Um, so we have one in Costa Rica, one in Hawaii, and one in Fiji. So Hawaii is our only domestic option. All the others are international. All of our semesters, they are college courses. Um, they are college semesters. So you're going to be taking a full load of college classes, all those freshman general education credits that you would be taking at your university um, regardless. So you might as well be taking it traveling around the world. Um, the awesome thing about these semesters is we do make them very experiential. So it's not just sitting in classrooms and absorbing information. We're bringing as much as we can outside of the classroom. Our field semesters in particular, you do a lot of field work, um, traveling all around. If you're learning about environmental science in Hawaii, you're also, um, you know, studying what the, the fish in the reef are doing or traveling around to volcanoes and taking samples. So it's very, very hands-on, a lot of fun. Um, and there's a lot of support. So we've got a bunch of staff that are on the ground with our students, um, not just our teaching staff, but also just our program leaders who are really um, in charge of any like non-academic support. And um, they're the ones who are having a lot of awesome excursions with our students. So taking them around to different, um, you know, historical places, uh, fun places, and a lot of just, yeah, exciting excursions on the whole semester. So there's a lot of success um, staff and a lot of mentorship and small class sizes, just really hoping for our students to have the best college semester. Um, we are discussion based. So there are going to be small classes, 20 to 25 students. Um, we really believe that discussion based classes are the way that things should be. Um, it definitely helps with those um, those mental juices instead of just sitting there and taking tests and quizzes. So our on-campus semesters, as I mentioned, um, these are all in Europe. So we have one in London, um, one in Italy, and one in Spain. Um, these are the course listings that you guys can choose from. So they're definitely catered to the locations that you're in, um, but it's going to be all those freshman gen ed credits, as I mentioned before. Field semesters, um, these are also awesome, um, a little less like that trad traditional study abroad because you're staying um, kind of in the, the heart of these um, these countries in, in smaller villages um, and not in big cities like you would be in London, for example. Um, this is some, some examples of excursions that we do in Costa Rica, um, tons of fun stuff there. So it's not all just academics. Um, we do a lot of really incredible stuff on all of our semesters. So the second pillar is admissions to a great fit school. So as I mentioned, we partner with over 60 universities across the state. So what that means is when a student applies to Virto, you can simultaneously apply to any of our partner schools um, for free. Our application is free as well. Um, all this information is on our website. Um, I'm running out of time, so I'll wrap it up. The third pillar, last but not least, very affordable um, option. So we aim to be as affordable, if not much more than traditional college semesters. All of our information is on our website as well. Um, definitely check that out. We'd love to have you and we'd love to answer your questions. Happy shopping. Great, thank you. Before we hear from our next two representatives, if you have any questions at all, to feel free to submit those using the Q&A function. Um, any question at all, um, we encourage you to include the school name, but also um, feel free to submit any questions at all about the college ap application process um, and any questions that you have for any of our representatives here today. The next representative is from Liberty University. Hey everybody, my name is Sarah Hughes. I am actually a national recruiter with Liberty University. So I'm going to just share some information just about my school. Um, one thing that I love about us is we are actually one of the world's largest Christian universities. So what that means is our ultimate mission is to train champions for Christ. So through all the various degrees that we offer, they're going to be taught with a biblical emphasis. Now here, you'll actually be able to see and look at all the different schools and colleges that we offer. I would say our top majors that we offer at Liberty are our School of Engineering, 
our School of Nursing, our School of Business, and our School of Aeronautics. Um, so what's really neat is if you're interested in multiple things as well, you can combine them um, as in a double major or even add them as a minor as well. So you have that option. We have about 15,000 students on campus. However, what I really like about our school is we actually have a 21 to one student to professor ratio. So we make your class sizes smaller so that you can really interact with not only your peers, but your professors as well. If it's still intimidating to ask questions in the classroom, we get that as well. So we also have 10 office hours each week where our professors are required to offer that just for students. If you have questions about tests, assignments, um, projects, or anything of that nature. Um, now at Liberty, we are also an NCAA Division I school. We offer 20 sports at that level, including football, basketball, baseball, soccer, we also have club and intramurals. So club sports actually give you the opportunity to still compete against other schools on a team, but you're not at that D1 level where you have to keep up your grades and you have an intense schedule and things like that. Intramurals is where you actually get to play just student to student. So if a group of you and your friends are really interested in creating a team, you can do that and play someone from your hall. So a lot of different ways to kind of get involved and stay active. As far as our dining and retail locations, one of my favorite things is obviously the amount of food that we have on campus, which is great. We have your typical Dunkin' Donuts, Starbucks, uh, Chick-fil-A, Auntie Anne's. You'll also actually see a look at some of our housing options that we offer on campus. So this is going to be our brand new style of living, which is our residential commons. So if you're looking to live the bougie life, this is definitely the place to live. It's really close to all of your classes. Um, and again, it's brand new. Um, so everything, like all of your amenities are going to be nice. Now we also have an apartment style called East Campus, and we have a lot of different options for traditional. So whether you're looking to live with one person or two other people, it really depends all on you and your affordability of kind of what you're looking um, to stay for. Now, as far as our admissions process, we made it super easy for you guys. We made it in just four simple steps. So I know that, you know, with all colleges, it all looks different, but at Liberty, I wanted to go ahead and provide you a look at how you would start the process. Now, I also wanted to provide you guys a look at our GPA and SAT and ACT requirements. Here at the bottom right-hand corner, this is what the typical student enters in with at Liberty. Now, obviously with COVID, things have changed. We definitely understand that. Um, so we've been a little bit easier just with like our admissions process, but um, the GPA is going to be a look at the unweighted GPA, obviously not adding like AP classes, college classes and things of that nature. Now, obviously you guys are located in Pennsylvania and we are in Virginia. So I know that's not too far of a hike for you guys, which is great. What I love is you're able to actually bring your car and campus as a freshman and all other classmen are as well. We also don't have any out-of-state tuition, which is huge. So um, I wanted to give you a look at one of the scholarships that we offer, which is our academic scholarship. It's going to go off of your unweighted GPA. So you'll be able to match where you're at um, with what we will award you. We'll also add bonus um, scholarship money for you. If you took the test score, you can kind of match it up there. And as you can see, you can get up to full tuition, which is amazing. Lastly, we have been open this whole time, which is so exciting. So we would love for you to go ahead and experience campus yourself. Um, so Experience LU gives you the ability to take a full tour of all of our academic buildings and the housing options. It's hosted every Monday and Friday. We also have College for a Weekend, which gives you the opportunity to get real life experience as a college student. You're able to stay in the dorms, try the food, go to the athletic events. And we host that every year. We host it um, twice in the fall semester and then twice in the spring semester. And it's only $50 to attend and that covers everything for you guys. Um, we also obviously have personalized tours and virtual tours. So definitely check us out. We're a great school and our campus is beautiful. The last thing I wanted to leave you guys with is just my contact information. Um, so 
If you wanted to go ahead and apply today, um, if you text SP to 49596, this actually gives you a free application. And this is good for today, tomorrow, or even next year. So definitely make sure you save this. I also provided a QR code that you can go ahead and scan. And this will give you information on how you can go ahead and visit us. Um, but thank you guys for your time. And I hope you guys have a great night. Great. All very helpful information. Unfortunately, the University of Massachusetts Amherst was unable to make it, but that's okay because we're gonna at this point pivot now into our Q and A portion of the session, so we can hear from all our wonderful representatives who shared already tonight. Um, so at this point, I'll ask if all representatives could please turn on their cameras to get ready to unmute themselves. And our first question here is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Again, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll go ahead and get started in the same order in which you all presented in. Okay, so some advice that I would give someone going through um, the college process would be definitely to visit campus. Um, if you have schools in mind and you are able to actually get yourself there, um, I think it's really important to make sure that this is going to be a right fit for you. Um, obviously, during the summer months, it's going to look a little bit different um, than when school is actually in session. So seeing um, you know, the campus population, am I going to be comfortable here? Um, and just giving yourself time um, to review all of your options. Um, because sometimes students tend to kind of, I don't know, wait the process out and then everything feels kind of rushed. Um, so, you know, starting, you know, right now is a really good time to do that going into your senior year, um, just so you have that time. That's all. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, kind of the same thing. I, I always encourage students, you know, to get feet on, you know, feet on the ground on, on the campus that you're looking at. Um, also, as well as, you know, looking at what you're interested in studying, I think that's a huge, um, you know, portion of the college search process is, you know, figuring out kind of what you're what you're looking into, like in terms of what you're studying. Um, and if that school has that, and then obviously the, the, the price, it comes down to, you know, you know, colleges, you know, is a little bit expensive. So, you know, it's kind of working around the financials and stuff like that and finding out what works for you. Um, that's always a huge, important part of, of the college search process. I would definitely recommend getting involved early when you're in your college search process. And by that, I mean like visiting campus and a lot of schools, you're able to talk to faculty and being able to make those connections with the faculty before you're even a student, you're able to learn what they're teaching, be able to hear what they have to say about their school because they're the ones teaching the program. So I think definitely getting involved with more than just admissions when you're looking into schools, looking to talk to current students, hearing their perspectives on it. I think being able to learn more of that stuff while you're looking at your schools um, outside of like academics and things like that. I think getting all the information that you can from the beginning to make your decision, um, it'll make it a lot easier when you're starting to put everything side by side. Um, yeah, I definitely just wanna second what all of my colleagues said for sure. Um, one thing I would recommend is having a specific college email address. Don't use your high school email address because that's going to disappear as soon as you graduate. Um, so just very helpful in organization. Um, highly recommend that. And also I think just taking some time to really think about what you personally want um, and not just going along with like what your, you know, where your best friend is going to school or if everyone's going to the local college, maybe that's not a great fit for you. So really just taking a little bit of time to um, look into yourself and your interest in what what really like gets you excited personally. Yeah, I agree with everybody. It's hard to go last because what everyone said was really good, but I would definitely say visit campus. Um, it's really going to help you if you can get like an experience or if you have like someone that you know that goes to the college, get people's personal point of views as well and ask them, you know, what they recommend to check out. Um, another thing I like to tell students is search for scholarships outside of the colleges that you're looking into because there's so many different organizations that are out there um, that have resources for you. Um, a good one actually to start with is scholarshipsearch.com. Sounds sketchy, it's not, but it has a lot of different options for you guys to use as far as scholarships, even if it's like, I had one girl look one up and it was like, 
um, ethnic girl that strives for awesomeness. And she just had to write an essay and it was a $500 scholarship. So make sure that you're looking into resources even outside of the schools as well to help you. Uh, all great advice shared. So uh, thank you so much. Um, again, it's always helpful to hear from those who work at the respective institutions um, who can um, just offer advice or points of views um, that you didn't necessarily see. So thank you. Our next question here is what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? Um, so to be completely honest, I'm very new to Lock Haven. So this is kind of hard, especially with COVID and everything that's going on. So um, traditionally, something that's very popular for students is our homecoming weekend, um, because this is a time where um, we're very involved in the community. Um, they actually have a parade with some of the local schools and they each um, organization can get a golf cart and decorate that and then they have a parade through town. Um, so it just is a really a way to connect, you know, the university to the community um, and also with the football games and the alumni coming back. Um, just having that connection, um, you know, our alumni really enjoy giving back um, and really being on campus. So uh, that would be something that's really big for us. Um, and then as far as for students, they really um, enjoy like the trivia nights with unlimited wings um, and big O nights are something that's really popular as far as a student event. Uh, yeah, so at Pitt Bradford, uh, something really interesting and really fun that uh, the university kind of puts on is uh, right around Halloween every year. Uh, they call it Midnight Madness. Um, it's uh, all the students, you know, kind of dress up in costumes and stuff like that, and they, and they introduce. Um, the men's and women's basketball team and uh, men's and women's soccer teams, as well as our volleyball team. So it's just kind of a huge, you know, supportive event for all of our fall sports. Um, and then right after that, uh, they open up the dining hall for midnight breakfast uh, that all the students are able to go to for free. So it's a pretty cool, uh, fun event that gets the whole university involved. There's a lot of faculty and staff that show up too. Um, it's just a great way to kind of kick off the, the fall sports seasons uh, for, for our students. So it's a lot of fun. So I have two that come to mind and my first in like the admissions process, I really enjoy our accepted student day events that we do put on for our accepted students. It's just a fun day. Um, students get to come to campus and it's like they at the end of the spring semester. So um, it's students that are making decisions on their colleges. And so being able to make those connections um, as students are making those decisions, you know, commit that they're going to come to Keystone. It's just a really fun event. But as a student, um, being a graduate myself of Keystone, I definitely think our commencement ceremony is one of the best events um, that the school puts on. And it's really fun because all of the alumni do come together and um, kind of help every graduate um, get themselves together for grad finale and everything like that. So I think um, those two are just some great events that are at Keystone. Um, yeah, I think, it's an interesting question um, because we have so many different semesters and they're all very different. Um, so I think one cool thing about Virto in terms of this question is that our students are kind of always um, kind of always making um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, they're sort of like always making their their own, um, which is kind of cool on our semesters. But um, I think one that, that kind of sticks out is that in our, our Fiji semester, when our students and staff arrive um, into Fiji, then the, the community and the local villagers that we're staying with there, um, we have a big welcoming ceremony for our students. Um, they all sit around and drink kava, which is a very traditional welcome ceremony in Fiji. Um, it kind of tastes gross, but it's a really cool, um, really cool awesome thing. And I know that's one of like, one of the biggest highlights for our students in Fiji as far as, um, yeah, as far as that goes. Okay, for Liberty, I definitely think our coffee house um, is so much fun. So we host it in the spring, as well as the Christmas semesters. So coffee house is basically a time where we bring like the whole community together on our campus. We have about 12,000 people um, in attendance, which is crazy. Um, so basically it gives students the opportunity to do like skits, parodies, um, karaoke, and just put on a huge performance. So. Okay. 
Awesome. And our last question here is give an interesting or fun fact about your school. Um, so an interesting fact would be um, our bell tower that's on campus. There are actually uh, 50 chimes that go off. Um, so it's at um, a 15 minute mark before and after. Um, and then there's daily um, in the morning. And then at five o'clock, there is like a, I don't know, a 10 minute procession of various um, popular songs that you'd be familiar with. Um, so that would be my interesting fact for Lock Haven. All right, so something that's really interesting about uh, Pitt Bradford is that we're a relatively uh, flat uh, campus. Uh, and the reason for that is before the, uh, the university was built in 1963 is that Bradford actually functioned as an airport. Um, and that's where our university was, was built at. So there's a couple you know, different buildings on campus that are uh, kind of paid tribute to, to the old airport. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty cool, pretty cool neat uh, fact about uh, Pitt Bradford. So um, something interesting, I guess, about Keystone that I could talk about would be how innovative we are. Being a smaller school, you wouldn't think that we're like jumping onto new things, but we're growing. I had mentioned we have five new majors that are coming on. Um, are we just added football within the last two years. So we're making changes, even though we are a smaller school, we call ourselves small but mighty. So um, we're, I just, I think that'd be an interesting fact about Keystone about how innovative we are and how quick we are to change and adapt. Um, I think there are, <laughs> there are a lot of cool um, facts about Virtu, but I think one of the, the neatest things is that um, if a student decides to join us for their full freshman year, um, so doing both fall and spring semesters with Virto, um, they're able to travel to two different countries um, for their full first semester of college, which is pretty rad, um, and not a lot of students are able to say that, so I'm going to stick with that fact. Sorry, I always have this struggle in meeting myself when it's my turn. Um, I would say the coolest fact about Liberty is we actually have the longest academic line. Our um, previous president actually measured the longest one and he made sure that we have the longest one compared to it. So I can't remember how long it is. I just know it's the longest. So fun <laughs> fact. Great. Um, thank you so much to our representatives um, for just being here, for sharing. Um, those two questions are my absolute favorite because you get to really get a sense of what each school is like, um, get a sense of their culture and um, what makes each school truly unique. So thank you all for sharing, for being so open um, and for being here. Um, and again, thank you to each of you for joining us. We have reached the conclusion of this session, but before we close, um, there will be a very quick four question survey that will appear on your browser. If you don't mind taking a moment to fill that out for us, your feedback is greatly appreciated. There are more sessions happening tonight, so feel free to sign up for more at the same place where you registered for this one. And lastly, all sessions are being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash Pennsylvania. Again, thank you all and have a great night.